This video looks at hand animation in Motion Builder. Now in, for this we're going to use pose controls and we're going to set up poses of the hand and use keyframes of these to uh, improve what uh, often is uh, missing within motion capture animation. So when you do motion capture animation often you will capture just the body and you won't capture much detail of the fingers or the face. So this is a way of uh, improving on that and actually adding um, very quickly and easily poses to parts of the body. Now working in Motion Builder we have this character which is uh, has been generated by the Autodesk Character Generator website. If you're not familiar with this it allows you to either use preset characters, pre-built characters that they've already designed for you or you can generate your own characters and um, customize them using their blend shapes and different um, outfits. So for example here if I take a default male we may be able to uh, customize this using different aspects we could either do some morphing and blend shape work between these characters to kind of generate a mesh that we, we, we like. You can change the skin tones you can set the eye colors with these and add hair or effects on the head um, and also generate uh, different shapes to the body um, again if you have a quite a large uh, large and a thin body there you can generate um, quite a lot of different sizes with that quite quickly um, and a collection of clothing that you can work with with that and add in and um, so you very quickly generate a character you can use uh, tops, bottoms and um, generate a character very quickly but what we're looking at is is working with this and um, what do we do once we've created this so I will give him some shoes before I carry on and just to make it realistic. So I'll just add that in um, and then I'll finish and download this character so I can use this in my work. Um, so I can call it boiler, boiler suit. And I save that character. Now I've generated this and downloaded it and extracted it and I get a JPEG image which is the uh, bitmap, UV bitmap. I've also got a Maya file and an FBX file. So what I can do now is I can open that in Motion Builder and we can have a go at using this character to work with that. So if I open the boiler suit character, the FBX one is the one that will work in Motion Builder straight off. Otherwise, if you have a Maya file, you can then open that in Maya and do a send to Motion Builder. You can see it does have this uh, light in the scene, very strong um, light. And I'm just going to delete that because I don't really want that um, in the scene. Spotlights as well. I'm just going to delete all of those and um, try and just work with the character as is. So within here I have uh, some of the um, some of the aspects which are all to do with the face. So you do have a eyes in there. You have teeth, glands um, inside. The glands come in here by the eyes, um, but the teeth upper and lower are elements of the face as well. With the low res mesh. And the other aspect there, the master here, is the actual skeleton. So we can put that onto X-ray and we can see the skeleton in there. And if we were animating in this way, we could animate uh, by rotating these joints. But what we're going to work on here is a control rig. So it may be that you want to use uh, rotations, add rotations to this, or if you are using motion capture data you may use that straight onto these. Um, but 
in the workflow we're going to look at, we're going to use a an HIK rig um, just to help us work with that. So I'm going to click on the master button there, and from our character control, this is very similar and does exactly the same thing as the HIK window on Maya, but we can select from the blue square there, create control rig, and I'm going to go for forward and inverse kinematic on that and you can see it puts the control rig over the top of the skeleton. Now we're really only looking at hand poses on this but it has set up a lot of different options for you for animating this character. Um, for example you can start to animate this, the feet won't go through the floor um, and you can work on that independently of motion capture data or use animation layers over the top. For this we're really going to look at the character control reference and we don't have to look at the skeleton now. If we did want to look at the skeleton you can expand this selection here and we'll show you all the elements you've got in there. Um, so you can work with the hips effector there if I was wanting to look at the reference there, you can expand the branches or we should be able to collapse branches as well. So you can find parts you're working with very quickly um, and the controls to those as well. So we're going to start with one hand. We're going to start with left hand. So you've got left hand effector here, which allows you to move the hand. Um, it's got the inverse kinematic. You may bring that down to the side of the body. Um, you may work with it in a more natural pose. So I'll just kind of set that up in a, um, I'll just bring it straight down. And that should allow me to just have that in a relaxed state. Just zoom out to see what that, that does look like. Um, similarly, I'm going to work on the other arm there and just bring that down as well. Just lower it to make that feel. Better. I'll bring that shoulder up slightly um, just to give him a slightly better posture. Back a couple of stages. I think dragging that down too far did lose that, um, that shoulder setting there. So it drops slightly there. So I don't like that aspect of it. Um, I'm just going to bring that in around that area there and work with that in that way. So again, you do see a lot of motion capture animations with these hands just very straight. So you want to kind of be able to just put a different look to these. And with these effectors on the fingers here, we're able to generate some poses. So the first thing I'm going to do is really set up the natural pose, the neutral pose here. And if I select all of these effectors in the navigator, left hand, thumb, index, middle, ring, and pinky. Um, and I could also select the left hand effector, but I won't for now. Um, and if I add to the pose controls in the resources window here, press create, it gives me a little view of that from my viewport and sets up a pose. So my character pose one is, um, I could rename that if I wanted to. Um, probably won't rename them after this and uh, I call that open hand. So following that, there may be different aspects you want. So the thumb is pointing out a little, so I'll just bring that down and across slightly. That's pushing the other fingers a little bit out. In fact, I've got all of them selected again. So I'm kind of moving all of them at once. So um, that's not actually the best thing to do. So I'm just going to bring that thumb down. I want to relax that thumb. So it's a bit more, um, again, a bit more natural, giving a different look to that. So um, it's subtly different. It works like that. So I can just bring that in and again, give that a second pose there. And then if I wanted to. Uh, I highlight all of them again, just make sure I've got them all in that pose. And then if I take out the thumb, 
I can make more of a fist. So I'm going to bring them up, curl them around. That will take a little bit of adjustment to get that right, and I, I won't be able to use all of them at once. So I will deselect them and just reselect that one there. That's the. Uh, let's go to make a fist of that. Let's straighten that out again and bring that back up. See, sometimes inverse kinematics can be uh, challenging, probably the best way. <laughs> Uh, to describe it as it does do some some strange um, have some strange effects on your on your work so I take that as a, a kind of a fist a I mean I wouldn't call that a punching fist particularly because you're gonna get a it's not strong so what I do to make that a stronger fist again I'm selecting all of them at once, I want to just do them one at a time, is to wrap the fingers in a bit tighter and so if that was a punching fist that would be slightly different again. This thumb would probably come underneath um, out of the way so it's not going to get um, not going to get bent or snapped off in the wrong way so you've got to kind of think about the poses of the the way the hand works there and how naturally you would do this yourself so um, that is just about coming to it you're not going to see a lot of detail on the hands you want to see them from a, a distance and again we need to remember that uh, these are this is a low res character we're working with so we are going to um, not go for full realism and from a wide shot we're going to work with these. Uh, I rename that fist, add that one in there and now probably enough to work with for now I can double click on these and it will set these poses as we want them. So I had a couple that were duplicated, I think those two were duplicated so I can delete those, don't need those but I do have enough poses to be able to start working with this character now. So if I just put him into a, a wider stance there, I can set up the uh, take, start at zero, and rewind that. And it may be that I take my open hand to be the start point. And having these all selected here will allow me to key this. So I'm using the key controls now. And with these selected, I'm keying that and I get a key marker in there within that. So I'm going to scrub forward reasonable amount to about 60 and just have a slightly different look to that. So it's kind of just moving the fingers subtly. If I focus in on that, we should be able to see that um, a bit more clearly. So this is just a kind of a general motion. You're kind of getting some movement there people can relax their hands who's relaxing down to that and then if you had a conversation that was tensing him up slightly you may have a couple of different levels of fist you may bring into that so again i've got these effectors that are from this control rig selected and um, i'm keying that in there i'll get to the next one as well and finally, at the end of the piece, I'm just going to go back to uh, the probably the second open hand one within that. So now we've got a, a uh, an animation of that hand. We've got that working. It can work with what we're what we trying to tell in the story. The tension in the hands. The hands can say a lot about your character. Um, so even if it's just having some movement, some relaxed movement in there, just changing that will have quite an effect on your your character and adding that into animation can be really useful to uh, to show a difference between your very flat and open hands, unnaturally open hands, and hands that would work um, in a more realistic situation. So what what's the expression from the hands? So that's using poses. You can use poses in other ways. If I just save this, 
save this as um, hand poses one. And if I was to start that one again, like I say, we can work directly on the rotations. Um, and sometimes there is an advantage to doing this. If I, uh, again, if I get rid of these lights, and so if I expand branches, I can highlight all of those at once and delete them. That's what I didn't do earlier. Um, and so again, using that expand selection, we can select the hand there. We can right click that and you can work, start working with that. You're not going to rename it. If I re right click in this one and say expand, uh, expand to selection, that will take me to that marker there, the left hand. And I can say select branches, which selects the entire hand. So this is useful in that we can then keyframe that as an element or we can set that as a pose. So again, what I'll probably do is get that hand central so I know what the hand is. Um, and then this is probably going to be very messy. We can rotate parts of that um, as we work. So I'm going to select just different aspects of that. I want to expand that selection, expand branches of that. And um, we can start just bringing this subtly in. So again, as we did the, um, the rotations and the movement on the, the last element, just gonna bring this in and curl this slightly. Um, certain different, different ways you can work with this. But it can give a slightly more subtle or more controlled method of manipulating um, your uh, animation. So we're working with this. And what, what I'm going to do when I do come to pose it is again I will select the elements that I'm working with and I will do. So if I go back to the left hand here, I can say select branch and that will take me down and select all of those elements within that and again I'm going to pose that here and that will allow me to jump between these and work with these in different ways. So by clicking on these and selecting the elements that I'm working with in the um, and select the branches here, selecting the elements I want to key, I can then keyframe these at different points. So I'm going to keyframe that at the beginning and the end of my timeline. And then if I go to the center here, I should be able to take a different um, element there and we should be able to see the difference between those keys and that how that works. So again, that's a slightly different way of working compared to the working with the control rigs. Um, but it may be more subtle, it may be something you want to work with if you want that control over the hands that doesn't uh, slightly warp with some of the inverse kinematics that can be slightly tricky. So it is a little bit more time, time consuming using the rotations, but it does allow you to uh, do the same thing and work in that way. So there we have it. I mean, working with poses is great. You can, like I say, do the whole body. You can work with different aspects of that. And um, it's a really good way of storing information and using clips again. Um, and working with poses is well recommended, especially for um, enhancing your animation.